So welcome everybody uh, to our webinar today where we're excited to launch the Cloverbook series of electronic magnifiers, which is a new range that we've just um, able to show you. And our presenter today is Peter Cracknell up in our Brisbane office at Spring Hill. And um, he's help, being helped by Leanne, who's our customer service uh, officer there. And uh, she's going to be doing the camera work. So thank you, Leanne. Um, so just to start, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land from which this webinar is being presented. And that in my case is the Darug people in Western Sydney of the Eora Nation and pay our respects to any elders past or present. And just a little bit of webinar housekeeping for anybody that might not have attended one of our webinars before. So your microphone will be muted during the webinar just to avoid any background noise, but we will have time for questions at the end. And preferably if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A area. You can click on the little Q&A icon at the, on the Zoom controls or in the chat. Uh, if you're a keystroke user, that's Alt and H to get to the chat. And we are recording the webinar, so that will be sent around as a video link afterwards. And uh, yeah, that mentions a survey, but we've not got a survey today. So just a bit of an overview of what's going to happen during this webinar. So we'll, um, Peter's going to, um, as well as giving an overview of the kinds of electronic magnifiers that are around at the moment, um, introduce the Clover Book series and how that fits in uh, amongst the range of devices that we have. And then um, we'll be giving a demonstration of both the Cloverbook Lite model and the Cloverbook Pro and the differences between them. And then we'll have some question and answers session at the end. So um, over you to you, Peter. Good. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Great. Great. OK. Um, so um, we're going to be concentrating on electronic magnifiers and uh, I divide those up into three basic sorts or, or ranges, uh, which I describe as pocket-sized, uh, portable uh, or mid-sized mid portables and desktops. Um, so they all have their, their different applications. Obviously a pocket-sized electronic magnifier is extremely useful for taking anywhere, uh, for reading menus, brochures and so on when you're out and about or any, any part of the house. Uh, so they're very popular, of course, because they're so convenient. The only issue with them, of course, is the screen is quite small because they're pocket sized. The next size up is what we would call portable in the sense that they're battery powered, rechargeable batteries, or they have bigger screens. They can be moved within the home or the classroom and so on. But you wouldn't be taking them to the shops, you know, to read labels and that sort of thing. And the final category is what we would call a desktop electronic magnifier. And a desktop electronic magnifier will just sit in one place because the screen is quite large, gives great field of view and has many, many features, but it's going to sit in one room. Okay, so what I might do is uh, just, uh, yes, thank you very much for the message. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, pan around the room just to show you those three major categories. Um, I'm going to hand the camera to the proper camera woman. Right. You can see me okay there, Leanne? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to start with the pocket size. So as you can see, this is our smallest electronic magnifier, and it literally is pocket sized. It just fits into a top shirt pocket. Uh, we have slightly larger ones, the five inch screen, six inch screen, and so on. So I would still call these pocket sized, they or handbag size if you like, or rechargeable. Um, so the idea is that uh, you simply You simply bring it up to what you want to read like this and you you move the screen across what you're trying to read very very convenient for labels and a bit of spot reading and <coughs> the um the limitation is the field of view you you have to move them a lot longer words may be too wide for the screen okay so then uh, we have a range of uh, portable electronic magnifiers and on this desk here, we have a Clover 10, 10 inch screen, a Traveller, which is a, a 13 inch screen, 
the Clover book, which we're going to be spending some time with today, the Mercury 12, and the MagniLink tab 12 as well. So as you can see, they're all of around about that between 10 and 13 inch screen size. Now I'm going to show you what the desktop electronic magnifiers are like. And now we're talking about 24 inch screens, which gives us a, a great field of view. Fantastic for, uh, for, for reading, coupled with a sliding platform that we can move the, the prints left and right, uh, or a book and so on. Very good for heavy duty reading and writing tasks as well. But obviously they're desktop, they're not going to be moved from place to place. So the, um, the mid-range size is it's really exciting because it, it allows you to use it from classroom to classroom, from room to room. For example, you might be doing something in the kitchen, but then you want to, might want to read a TV guide in another room. You might be in a business meeting and you want something that's about the laptop size that would be taken from place to place. So the, we've had for some time various sorts of mid-size uh, mid electronic magnifiers. A very popular one uh, is the Clover, the Clover 10, 10 inch screen, very simple um, electronic magnifier. Now I'm going to put these into context so that you'll be able to see uh, the strengths and weaknesses of each compared to the Clover book, which I'll be spending some time with. So this is very lightweight and transportable. It can be clipped to a frame that allows it to be above the working material. One of the features of the mid-size electronic magnifiers is that they raise the, uh, the camera and the screen above the working area which allows us to not just read, but also to write as well. So we can bring pens and so on under here to do a crossword or to fill in a check or a form or something like that, as well as read. And of course we can adjust the magnification and so on. This one has lights as well, which illuminate underneath which are very important for getting a nice, uh, even image, properly illuminated, and so on. So this is, a, this is a very popular device, mainly for use at home, very popular with older people as well, just to read the TV guide or recipes and, and, and so on. Uh, it can be easily moved from bench top to, to living room and so on. I come now to the traveller. Well, the beauty of the Traveller is it's got a big 13 inch screen. So now we can get very good field of view. And the other thing that's uh, quite useful about the, the Traveller, especially when it's in its frame, is that it has a sliding capability. So if I have the magnification up a little bit, Whereas on the Clover, I have to move my paperwork by hand left and right. On the Traveller, I can actually move the whole Traveller, which is one of the reasons why it's called the Traveller, left and right, like this. And of course, we can also change the colours and the background colours and so on. So this, this allows us to read at large magnification and wide documents because we're moving the screen left and right. The only downside is, of course, when you're transporting it, you have to transport the two items, the stand and the traveller. And for older people, sometimes um, we, we, we're concerned that they don't let the uh, carriage mechanism slip around. We'll be spending some time on the Clover book, of course. That's the main subject today. And um, before I do, just to put it into context with our other two similar screen size devices the Mercury 12, and the MagniLink tab. The basic, um, the basic uh, differences between the new Book Pro and these two devices, the Mercury 12 and the MagniLink tab, and we've, we've done previous webinars about these two devices, 
is these two devices use Surface Pro Windows 10 technology and they can double up as laptops as well. Whereas the Cloverbook Pro um, uses an Android chat technology and it isn't a Windows system. Its principal use is just to be a magnifier without any other computer capability. So if people are looking for a more sophisticated device with Windows capability, they may be better with a Mercury or a MagniLink tab. If somebody's looking principally for a very portable electronic magnifier, then the Cloverbook Pro uh, would, would, might be better for them. But as you can see, and just in a physical comparison, the, the way they are arranged in the frame is very similar from device to device. They are all articulated from the back. So we can bend the screen height to suit the angle that's comfortable for us. They all fold away as well. So with the Mercury, we can fold it into its frame and unfold it. And exactly the same for the Clover book. One of the nice things about the Clover book is it has a convenient carry handle. And it uh, feels like it's uh, going to be protected uh, because of the, the backing is quite strong. It feels nice and firm. What I mean by that, it's not flopping. It's actually going to stay in position. You get a, a definite sense of it's being firm on, on its joints. So let's get started on the Clover Book, and I'm going to talk about the Clover Book Lite first of all, because there are two models. There's a Clover Book Lite, which is principally a magnifier. And there's the Cloverbook Pro, which is exactly what the Cloverbook Lite is, plus some extra features, including uh, the ability to speak out loud and the ability to use a distance camera to look at things at a distance. And as I'm talking about this, I may refer to some of our other devices to put them and to compare them. So the first obvious thing is about magnification. So we, we're going to be using everyday material for this demonstration, so I'm going to use the same newspaper across all the devices. So you should be able to compare um, the images and so on from one screen to the other. But as you can see, it's got a lovely, lovely sharp image. And you might also notice that even though the angle of the screen is about 35, 40 degrees, the image of the print is very, very straight. It's not being distorted in a tent type effect, as was the case, or is the case, with our, with our Clover uh, in the Clover 10. In the Clover 10, in the Clover 10, what you should see is because of the angle of the screen, you should maybe see that the columns are actually on a slight tent effect slope. And that's simply because the camera is, uh, the camera and the screen are already on an angle. What we do with the close of book range is we have a feature called uh, image correction, which actually corrects the image to be as straight as possible automatically. So even if I adjust the screen angle, it will adjust to try and keep it as straight as possible automatically. Now you may notice that as I flatten the screen, in other words, it's more horizontal, I can fit more columns across the screen. But that's not comfortable when we're sat down. So in that, invariably, you're going to be finding a compromise where you will push the screen at an angle so it's more comfortable when you're sat like this. What are the controls? One of the things I really like about the Clover book is it gives a combination of choices. You can either operate it with real buttons and dials, which is often very, very popular for some people that are, don't like touch screens, 
Or if you do like touch screens, you can use traditional iPad type gestures to magnify with pinch zoom. We can also do that with the other two, the Mercury and the MacBook. The difference is the Mercury and the MacBook are only touch screen. They don't give options for uh, for the uh, for the dials. So, for example, here I have a dial that also adjusts the magnification, just as if I'd used a pinch zoom gesture. And again, contrasting that with the Clover 10, we don't have touch screen on the Clover 10. We have physical buttons to operate the uh, the magnification and, and the other features. So this uh, gives us the best of both worlds in the sense that uh, some people will prefer dials and some people will prefer the, the touch screen. One of the unique things about the Cloverbook, and when I refer to the Cloverbook, I'm referring to both the Cloverbook Lite and the Cloverbook Pro here, is the ability to not just pinch zoom, but also pan with a, with a gesture. So I can actually push the image left and right, back and forth. And this is a live image. It's not a photograph that we've taken. We could do this with some of our other devices, like the, the Mercury and so on, but only when the image has been frozen. Um, whereas this allows us to do it even when it's live. And I'll just demonstrate that. So if I move the paper, you can see that it's a live image, but I can also pan it with my finger as well. So this could be really useful. I'll give you an example of where it could be useful. Let's say we're using a big magnification and it's just slightly too big for the screen. I've got a choice. I could either move the physical paper or I could just nudge it left and right with my finger. And that's unique to the Clover book, uh, to have a live, live panic like that. It's a, it's a really neat feature. So we have controls for magnification. We have controls for colors and backgrounds. This dial on the left here allows us to, by just flipping it to the right, change to a high contrast combination, white on black. I rotate it one more stop black and white, another stop, yellow and black, black and yellow, and so on. This palette of choices, uh, we can actually subtract some of these color combinations if they're of no use, so that then you're limiting the amount of uh, uh, notches on the dial, so to speak. And that's done through a settings area. I really like the ability to quickly go back to natural color. When we're looking at uh, documents like magazines, we don't want to see it always in high contrast yellow and black or white on black because photographs look so awful. But by pressing the middle part of the, the colour select, we can instantly go back to natural colour. So that makes it a very convenient function. That compares to on the, on the Clover the original Clover 10, where we do have to cycle, oh, we, no, we do have a button that takes us mm. back to, to natural colour here. On some of our other devices, we have to rotate through, rotate through the colours to get back to natural colour. So we have uh, the convenience of being able to do, uh, to switch back to natural colour and uh, to the, our, our choice of colour combinations. You may have spotted that there is an orange, an orange uh, button at the front here. It's not the on-off button. The on-off button is on the side. That's also where the charging, the charging hole is. Uh, no, this is actually a joystick. Uh, it was actually introduced in the Clover 10, the, the concept of a joystick. The idea is that you can actually move the image either by panning with your finger or with the joystick as well, whichever is more convenient. It also gives us an option for moving through the menus within the, uh, within the settings and so on as well. One of the clever ergonomics of the Cloverbook Lite is that when it comes to writing, the pen is still visible the real pen, the real hand, is still visible just in front of the screen. 
as well as the magnified view of the um, of the uh, of the writing. So this is very useful for people who have trouble when the pen disappears behind the screen. This was often the problem. Uh, it's a little bit of a problem, but not so much with the with the, with the Clover Ten. That it does tend to sit behind the screen a little bit here, whereas on the Clover Book, the camera is angled in such a way that the the hand is completely forward of the screen, and that's also important for writing because we don't want the height of the pen to be obstructed by the, the screen. We want to have full range of movement when writing, and that's made possible because of the camera angle of the clover book. So, of course, you can see the applications here for filling in forms and, and so on. So the, the thing about the clover book light is that it's a great reading and writing device and it can accept very wide documents. So you'll notice here, of course, I've got the whole the tabloid here. Because there's nothing obstructing the sides, I can actually move freely left and right. And of course, that also applies to our other devices of the same format. So the Mercury and the MacuLink, again, they allow wide documents. Now if you contrast that to our other devices, the, the, Clover, uh, the Clover 10, it's limited a bit by the width of the legs because at some point with a magazine or something, you're going to butt up against the leg here. So that will limit the size or the width of the books and documents that you have. So for example, if I'm reading recipe, uh, like a, a big book like this, instantly I have a problem because I can't fit between the, um, between the legs of the, of the Clover 10. Also, on the Traveller, for very wide books, I can't fit them within the legs of the stand. For the Clover book, no problem whatsoever. We can, and again, as I was saying, we can either move the, the real book or we can just move the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the live image here like this. Very, very convenient, well thought out. All right, so um, the Clover, Clover Book Light, we anticipate will be very popular for people that need a highly transportable um, electronic magnifier with a, a reasonably generous screen size without being over the top. Uh, I'm now going to introduce you to the Cloverbook Pro. Now the Cloverbook Pro is exactly the same appearance as the Cloverbook Lite with one extra thing. And I have to confess I have been cheating here. I've been pretending this is the Cloverbook Lite and in fact it is the Cloverbook Pro model. Um, so the Cloverbook Pro includes everything I've talked about in the Cloverbook Lite, but in addition, has an external camera which conveniently swings out from the side of the of the um, of the arm here. Now the external camera swings out. It can rotate, and I'm rotating. This is not electrical. I'm just simply rotating the camera, and it's even got an extra little adjustment here um, for, for uh, compensating for angles and so on. I'm just going to demonstrate how and why we would use an external camera. So I think the best way is to talk about a scenario like a classroom, where you have a student who needs to be writing, then you can be reading, not the newspaper I hope, but um, their textbook, and they also need to see the teacher and the whiteboard. So what we can do with the Cloverbook Pro is we can press a button on the side of the of the Cloverbook Pro and it will then give us the option to see a distance view which I'm just going to reduce the magnification a bit so you can see what we're looking at. So the student would be doing this all themselves, they're in control of it. They can rotate the 
rotate the, the, the head of the, of the camera here, angle it, zoom, And so now we're looking at the blackboard, we're looking at the teacher's face, or we're looking at maybe some overhead PowerPoint presentation that they're doing. The students in control of that magnification, again, they can use, they can use pinch zoom or they can use the, the, the dial there. Now, what about if they wanted then to also see their work at the same time as the, the, uh, the distance view? Well, the same button again allows us to split the screen. So we can have their work down here and the teacher in the top. We can also have them side by side, the near view and the distance view to maximize the, uh, depending on the aspect of what they're trying to read. So this can be very, very powerful. One highly transportable device with a distance function and a close text function as well. And then back to back to the, uh, the, the what we call the text view here, like this. Let's also take a, another setting, not not so much a classroom setting, but perhaps a domestic setting. What about if somebody wants to just check their makeup or something like that? What they can do is they can rotate the camera around towards themselves. Switch back to that. And you'll get a shock, of course, because it's made magnified and like this. It's going to do focus. So now we can do uh, makeup and all that sort of stuff, just check any blemishes and so on, it, as if it was a magnified mirror. And this is where the sort of example of where the, the artic extra articulation comes in here with the bend here, like that. So that's a, a lovely extra feature for domestic use, using the, the, the one camera. I really do like the way this camera is not obtrusive. It, it doesn't really stand out too much. If we compare it to the, the MagniLink camera here, going to switch it on. The MagniLink camera is a lot bulkier. It is a better camera. It's got more megapixels and, and resolution and so on, but it certainly is a, a clearly a bulkier camera. Like this. And we can get very, very sharp images at a distance. It's, it's very, very, uh, very high quality camera. Uh, of course, completely controlled by the students or the person in their workplace. They're, they're in a meeting, they want to look at the, the Excel spreadsheet that's on the PowerPoint and so on. Uh, they, can, they are in control of the angle and the magnification and so on. The uh, one downside with this particular one is we can't actually split the screen on the, on the, on the MagniLink tab. On the Mercury, though I don't have the camera to show you today, again, it sits up on the top here. Uh, the same sort of idea, you, you just twist it around to aim at the distance, but this does give you the ability to split the screen. So I think you can see that there's a lot of devil in the detail here, which is why it's so important uh, to, to consult with uh, low vision consultants at, at Quantum to tease out whether these issues are important or irrelevant. Is split screen a really important thing for people or not? Is the size of the camera important uh, for packing away and so on? Or do people need something that's very, very easy to pack away uh, and not very obtrusive? And those are the sorts of conversations we have all the time with people. We, of course, we are also trialing this equipment as well, uh, just to make sure that the, the right advice is given uh, for, for the context of the, of the person. Rebecca, how are we going for time? Oh, good. Yeah, we're, it's only half 11, so yeah, we've got plenty of time. Okay. Um, uh, before I move on to the text to speech, uh, are there any questions that are queued up at all or any questions that people would want to ask about the magnification? Um, we have had a couple of questions that have popped up. So one was, um, where are these items displayed and do people need to make an appointment to trial them? Um, 
So, yeah, you can. Yeah, so are you able to talk to that, Rebecca, at all? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we do have our, well, um, generally we have our uh, three main um, site supports, or sorry, four site support centres, and you, you do generally need an appointment um, for those. Um, also, at the moment, obviously, it's a bit of a fluid situation with the lockdown. We can't do in-person appointments unless it's really urgent at the moment, and we need to get approval for that. Um, in the lockdown areas. So um, we've got ones in um, northern Sydney in Thornley, in Spring Hill where Peter is and the Anna, um, in uh, Melbourne, in Hampton East at the moment, although that's due to change, and in southern Sydney in Kirrawee with Jeff. Uh, but we do also um, go out to, um, to show people equipment as well in their homes or workplaces or schools. So, and, um, oh, we've also recently got David in South Australia, David Bean from South Australia as well. He's able to look after people and people in other states, we can get devices to them. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, they are available to trial, but, yeah, we'd have to make arrangements. So just contact us. So, yeah. Um, we, also we, do co we also do co-consultancy as well, don't we, Rebecca? So, oh, yes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, what I mean so. by co-consultancy is that uh, oftentimes we get asked by occupational therapists to, to, to lend our advice about equipment like this. Um, mm. So the occupational therapist would be obviously pulling everything together, um, but we would be a co-consultant in our showrooms or, or in, in people's um, homes and, and so on, doing a co-consultancy, yeah. for example, through the NDIS and so on. Yeah. And um, we have been able to do telehealth things as well, sending equipment out, and then if people got access to, to Zoom or FaceTime or whatever, um, teams doing things that way, you know, while we're, <laughs> while we're locked down particularly, or if in more remote areas <laughs> so that we can't easily get to. So, yeah. Uh, the other question was from David Vosnarkis. Um, with the Clover book, I assume you can turn the gestures off if not needed or preferred. I'm not sure about that. Do you know, Peter? Yes, uh, um, uh, I believe you can through the through the settings uh, uh, turn some of those features off. You can certainly subtract some of the, the features. Um, but with the gestures, um, I'd have to check that on the Clover book. Certainly with the, the Magni Link of the Mercury, we, you can certainly t turn off some of the touch and tap gestures. Uh, I, know, I know what you're referring to, so for example, um, there's uh, the ability on the Maggie Link tab to use two finger swipes to change the to change the um, the background. Um, similarly, uh, on the on the Mercury as well. Um, so um, yes, so it, uh, I just need to check that uh, in the settings. Yeah, on the, uh, yeah. I had a quick look in the manual. I'm not sure if um, I couldn't see the the option under settings to turn the touch gesture off, but yeah, I, I briefly looked. So yeah, we can get back to you on that one. Um, and I, I guess that could be an issue for some people who they may be close to the screen with their nose. I, it's not recommended, but sometimes that is the case. Uh, and and that there's sometimes you want to disable that touch screen functionality. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. So, All right. Well, I, I might move on to. The, the area that we call text to speech or speech out loud. Um, mm -hmm. So everything we talked about so far has been about magnification and contrast and so on, and about ergonomics of uh, reading and writing. As some people find that they tire when they're visually reading, and they like to take advantage of text to speech or the ability for the device to read back out loud the, the materials underneath. So just to put this into context, the, um, the, the, the Clover 10 and the Traveller cannot do that. They, they are just magnification devices. Um, but all three of these devices, the uh, Clover Book Pro, the Mercury 12 and the Magdalene tab, can, can provide text-to-speech output. And I should mention there's some common factors. They're, they can all have different languages selected. So if you selected, say, it's Italian, um, and you have that language loaded into your device, uh, then it, it could be read back in, in that language. It varies from device to device as to which languages are preloaded. Uh, so so uh, again, you'd have to you'd have to check that level of detail with us as to wh whichever language the, your uh, your customer or your participant needed. 
So uh, let me just give a demonstration of the, uh, the text to speech. There is a, a couple of ways of doing this with the Cloverbook Pro. There's something called a, a quick text to speech, and there's there's another one through the home setting, which uh, which uh, gives you some extra options. I'm just going to quickly do the quick text to speech. Before I do, I'm just going to angle the screen up a little bit. I'm going to switch back to. I don't actually need to switch back to, but uh, I'm going to do that now. Switch back to the uh, to the text view. It shows you here. It's going to be the text view. Make the magnification a bit smaller. Now, why am I doing this? I could do it at an angle, or if I want to increase the field of view, I can raise the screen a bit. And you can see that I'm fitting more columns on by, by doing this. Now I'm going to press the T for text to speech. Now, again, it shows me a window where I can see how much of the document I can fit across the screen. One of the great things about the Cloverbook Pro is the field of view is so tremendous. I can fit, this is a, a tabloid newspaper, I can fit one page of the tabloid across. Not the whole length, of course, um, because of the aspect of the camera, but that's a tremendous amount that I can fit into that field of view. Then I press, again, either the, the physical T button or the on-screen T button here. And what it's going to do is going to divide up the page into the zones that it can understand. You may actually see some of these zones being shown now. These are the, and it will start to speak once it's identified all the zones. col.com.au Saturday in 26, 2021. Koa Relay, it.co.au. Schools expand into our Avanti Elite, elite colleges boosting younger kids' enrolments. Stephanie Bennett, Induction Reporter, a SRGE in demand to create school places, WFLLC multiple elite, Brisbane colleges in and boost their enrolments to include more primary school age kids next year. But experts say earlier admission into private schools, which charge parents thousands of dollars in fees each as you, could increase funding pressure. Now, I stopped it there by pressing the T button. I can also uh, just move the focus somewhere else. I'll just do that now. Pressure of that prime mass, he was in the way of St. Peter's College. Meanwhile, St. Haven's Anglican Girls School has seen a surging demand for the five places. But Principal Tony Reed and said they didn't yet intend to add additional classes. Deakin University Senior Education Lecturer and Rose said increased year five and year six private enrolments. Now I pause that again with the T button on the side here. So what that gives me the ability to do is whilst it is reading, to pan around to some other area, hold the, the, the block and it will read from that point. The settings for speed and so on, they are available by pressing the home button and uh, we can then adjust the, uh, the, you know, the skipping forward to, to another thing, pausing and playing. You may also notice in there that there is a letter P here. Now this refers to the fact that we're, using, we're seeing the picture view, the real facsimile of the original document. But I can also, Ask it to show it text mode. in a text mode. I've just chosen this particular font and background and so on. But this is a single column extracted from the original uh, with a moving highlight through it. Private enrollments would impact that schools given funding was determined by the number of students. This way of funding affects our whole education system and absolutely there's a flow on effect. She said, but parents. Um, so this, and I can also move up and down this column just with the, the, the panning gestures as well. Also, I can use the, uh, the pinch zoom as well. 
So the things I've learned about pinch zoom from the live view, I can apply in this column view as well. Many people like the column view because they don't see um, the, the, the cursor moving through, the highlight moving through the, the whole document left to right and so on. It's all contained within the window available to, 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 to see the, the, the text. Again, we can change the backgrounds and so on just by rotating the, the normal color dial to choose different backgrounds if we prefer. So the text to speech, you can also change the voices and so on. Um, to do this, we'll go into the menu system and I'll just demonstrate that now. So I do a long press of the home button. I just come out of the, uh, the text to speech area. Long press of the home button. The settings are over here and I'll come to that in a second. I just want to demonstrate that one of the nice things about the Clover book is that we can use the joystick to move through the, uh, the settings as well as electing to touch the various uh, options here. There is also a setting that will uh, speak back as we move through menus as well. So let's go to the settings. You can see from the, the settings, uh, just while we're on this particular screen, which is about the general settings, that we have tilt compensation on. This was the thing about the tent effect. Um, I'm gonna go to the voice settings, the picture of the man here. We can change the gender, man, male or female. And we can choose from various languages here as well. So on the Clover book, we have um, you know, Italian, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, um, uh, simplified Chinese, uh, French, and of course, uh, English, US and UK, and Australian, of course, which is the one we're going to be using here. On the languages again, you see this is not uh, perhaps as comprehensive as some of the language sets that we have on our bigger machines. On, on our Clearview speech desktop machine, we have something like 36 languages. But one thing I have tested with people is on the simplified Chinese. Uh, I, I tried that with um, one of my customers and she was very impressed with the, the quality of the, the speech in, in, in simplified uh, Chinese. So um, that's, that's a big endorsement of this. Uh, I know that from experience with other speech synthesizers that the Italian and the Spanish and the German will be good. Um, but of course, it's sometimes difficult to know, not, not speaking Danish, I don't know how well it will do Danish and so on. Um, but th it's important to understand that this is not translating from in in English to Chinese or English to Italian. It's only if the original document is in Chinese uh, or in Italian that it will sp speak in, in that language uh, once you've scanned it with those settings set. That's just an important point. It's not translating from one to the other. It's simply speaking uh, in the correct, the correct uh, synthesizer uh, if you've got the original language under there. Okay, so I'll come out of that. And this button here means go back. And we're back now to the, 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 main, the main area there. So the one that we've been using previously had been the magnifier settings and the text-to-speech settings. This is the other way of getting into text-to-speech. As you can see, it just presents us then with the window which we capture, with which we capture everything like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to compare that to the, the Mercury and to the Magni link, just to give you an idea of the, the slightly different ways they handle these things. So with the Mercury, we have a menu here, and I will just flatten it up a little bit as well, just to be fair. And the option in the is here, a picture of a man reading a book, takes a photograph, starting to process it. All text-to-speech uh, Scanning systems will take some time depending on the complexity of the original document. If it's a simple document, it will obviously happen quicker. If it's got photographs and all sorts of tabulation and stuff, it will take, take longer. 
And just to remind you, the uh, the Mercury and the MacLink are using Windows underlying. Ellen Winnett, a man has been arrested over what police allege was a brazen attempt to smuggle 64 million. And now I had it set on the column view. I'll just go and I'll just change that setting so that um, we can see it in its live view. General. Speech, reading, original. I'll just do the same thing again. Our winner, mail come off Saturday, June 26, 2021, 614,111 Coca, exclusive, Ellen. Now, now that we have the photograph on the Mercury, we can move it around, uh, just as we could have done on the Clover book. Man has been arrested over what police allege was a brazen attempt to smuggle $64 million of cocaine into Australia via a hidden compartment underneath the ship's hull. Act so the difference is primarily uh, in their different voices and, and, and different languages available. Um, so they're both very similar in their operation of being able to uh, start in a different place, stop and start it and so on. Um, of course, the, just to, uh, to reiterate, the, why is it important about this being a Windows system is that you could also be running other programs parallel to this. So at some point, you might want to, um, to swap to a, uh, a Microsoft Word document. It would be possible to minimise the, the Mercury software to one side and have a Word document side by side with it. We cannot do that with the Clover Book Pro. We can again do it with the MagniLink. Uh, the MagniLink tab being a Windows system can also um, have, it, uh, have a, a bit of a Word document and a bit of, of the Magnify document. I'm just going to just change these um, colours back to natural. And I'm going to just change the distance camera back to this one here. So that's us. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to now perform OCR. OCR, optical character recognition, is the process by which we we uh, capture the image and then convert it into. Let's see if I can turn that volume up. Now, US actor, playwright, and director John Cameron Mitchell, who is currently bunkered down in Sydney quarantine. Is proving for us. And you can see from this how quick this is. This is this is the Mercury, the MagnaLink tab is much quicker at the OCR than the other two devices. Um, you can of course change the view. So not this one. This one. And two. Still. Yeah. This. Uh, so now we have the original view, and we can change the colours to natural like this make it bigger. So uh, one of the uh, nice combinations on the magnetic tab is you can have like a ticker tape uh, of, of, the, of the font and see the original at the same time. Now I was dwelling a bit on those because sometimes it can be the deciding factor for people which, which choice they make between these, these three devices. Everybody's different, everybody has different needs. Some people rely very heavily on text-to-speech some people, they just use it when they get a bit tired and they'd rather have an article read back to them. Um, so, again, very individual. Everybody needs to be assessed according, according to their specific requirements. On the, the subject of split screens, of course, the and the, and the MagniLink, we're, we have to do all of the split screens within the confines of a 12-inch screen. And one of the problems with that is, of course, a 12 inch screen is not very big for a split. We can, as I showed you on the, on the Clover Book range, we can, of course, uh, split the screen, as I showed you, with this button here, whereby we can split. So we can either use the, the distance camera, we can split the screen, 
either horizontally or vertically. Um, where space permits, it's also possible to just connect a computer monitor to the playable book in, in addition to this screen, just a regular computer monitor would do. And then you've got more choices for, for the way we can split. I'm just going to go and get a computer monitor and demonstrate that. Of course, this is where space permits. So you just have a computer monitor, HDMI. The actual uh, Clover book has got HDMI, standard HDMI. It's also got HDMI in as well. And that's very, very rare. You rarely see HDMI in uh, on these devices. Uh, it could perhaps be useful for streaming video, that sort of thing. Uh, you can even, if you had a lightning cable, you could uh, take uh, the output from a, an iPad or a smartphone and pump it in through the HDMI, and then you'd see the image on the iPhone stretched out over the, over the screen here. I'm going to pump this extra monitor in. Okay, so on the computer monitor, now, I'll just try, just to angle it a little bit. So now we've got our split, so that we, instead of having to split the Cloverbook screen, we've said, okay, look, the computer monitor can have that, and I'll have the distance. So, so now we've got, we can be working on our text here, but also looking at the, the distance there. When I then press the, the button to here, we've got both. Now we've got both of the distance. And now we've rotated it so that the Clover book has got the, 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 the text reading area and the distance view is a portion to the external computer monitor there like that. So where space permits, that's really quite a useful combination there as well. All of these devices have the ability to save the information that you um, have been scanning, not just as an image file, but also uh, as a file that's been scanned with the OCR. All of them have this ability, and they all have slightly different systems for saving. Um, the COVID book uses a system whereby you can actually uh, use a voice tag as well. So in addition to just having a dated, date stamped file, it will also have a voice tag as well, so that you can more easily recover it from the, from the library of, of scanned files. And the Windows systems, the Mercury and the MagLink, they just use conventional file explorer, of course, to, to, to save the, the files. So I should talk a little bit about pricing as well. All of our prices are on the, the website. And uh, Rebecca will give us details for that uh, towards the end. But um, I'll just put it into context from, from the beginning here. With the, with the Clover 10, remember this is, has no text to speech, no distance camera, or anything like that. Uh, this one is 2100, including the fold up frame. You can detach it, of course, from, from, the, from the frame. And when you do that, you can open up the legs and it can rest flat on the, on the paperwork. But today we're talking about devices that can be raised up above the paperwork, like the Cloverbook can. So this is 2,100. The Traveller, including its frame, is 3,990. So there's a fairly big leap up into to this range here. And remember, of course, that the Traveller is an electronic magnifier without text-to-speech as well. The Cloverbook Lite, and to recap, the Cloverbook Lite does not have the distance camera and does not have the text-to-speech. That's 2,950. And the Cloverbook Pro is 3,940, so almost $1,000 more. Now, the Mercury comes uh, in two options. The, the Mercury fully assembled like this, but without the distance camera, but with the software, the Surface Pro, the frame and so on, is 5,290. Mm -hmm. If we 
um, add the distance camera, which just sits here. That takes it up to 7,190. However, many people actually already have a Surface Pro and they can use their Surface Pro and simply purchase the frame and the software and that brings the price down considerably. So for, for the Mercury, that brings it down to 3,790. That's where they provide their own Surface Pro. And for the Magni Link, the fully assembled uh, with, uh, with the distance camera and so on, that is 7,750, which is our, one of our most expensive uh, pieces of equipment. If the customer provides their service pro, uh, it's 6,250. So a very big range in pricing. In fact, the, at the upper end, we're talking about uh, in the same range as our, our more expensive clear view speech over here. Um, so the, this is about 7,700 for, for the clear view speech. Um, this also can do text to speech as well. Position the text inside the window and tap the screen. And just to recap, of course, the Clearview speech is a desktop machine. So it can't really be Seven easily fish moved. cakes. Two, one. Potatoes peeled and diced 200 grams tin salmon, rain sea salt and freshly ground black pepper. And the same features for being able to push around the image and start somewhere else. TBSP fresh palmers and cheese, a grated one cup breadcrumbs, one. You can see that um, the, the, the smaller, the mid-range, the portable ones have copied a lot of the features of the Clearview speech in terms of ease of use, the touch gestures and so on, but of course compressed them into a much more portable format. So I hope that gives you a reasonable overview of the, the Clover book, but also put it into context with all of the other options as well. We think it's a very useful mid-range electronic magnifier. We, we think it can be used at home, in the workplace, and in education as well, and there will be other, other places, of course, it can be used. Um, so very, very excited to, to launch it here. And um, as we mentioned before, we'd be very, very pleased to demonstrate it and to trial it with people. I'm gonna hand back to Rebecca and also go to questions as well. Yeah, thanks so much, uh, Peter. That's great. Um, yeah, so, yeah, that's a really comprehensive overview. So, yeah, if people have got questions, that there have been a few um, put in the chat. So we'll try and answer those. So um, I'll just stop sharing again. So um, one of them has been, I think you already answered this, but does the Clover Light have text speech to, oh, speech to text? Yes. Or text to speech. I'm just not sure which way around the person was. That. They um, said sorry. speech to text, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. Oh, just to be clear, speech. speech to text is dictating to it, whereas text to speech is it speaks back to you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, the light doesn't have the text to speech feature. That's just the pro version. Okay. So I hope that answers that question. And yeah. Um, and can you do OCR on a distance image? No, you. I don't, I don't can you do OCR of an image? Um, a dist distance image. Oh, distance, yes. Um, um, you, you certainly can with the, the magnetic tab. Um, I have never tried that. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm imagining if you can. Um, let's just uh, go to the distance. We have it on the poster there. Let's give it a go. Oh, I'm still looking at that. I don't think we can. Let's just see if we can. Um, I don't seem to be able to do that, Rebecca, no. Okay, no have a problem. But I know you can certainly do it with the magnetic tab. You can you can do it. Yeah. You can do 
text to speech from from uh, uh, remember that the text the the OCR won't really work on handwriting. So on a on a regular whiteboard where people are handwriting, it won't be able to read that back. But if it was a digital screen, uh, like an overhead projector or something like that, uh, then yes, it would be able to. It would be able to uh, text to speech back from that distant screen. Thank you. And another one from David. Uh, given that the Clover books are Android based, can you actually get to apps running on Android like Microsoft Words and Google Docs and things? I don't think so. It's just. Can you, Peter? Or? Um, uh, well, it's uh, it would be technically possible. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, it's it's, um, it's it's really designed to be a an enclosed system. Uh, mm. it, w it would be possible to, to do, but uh, that's not, as I understand it, part of the plan. No. Yeah, okay. Cheers. Uh, oh, um, players asked, do we have a comparison table for features of these devices? Now, I don't know if the clovers have been added, but we do now on our website. Um, and if it's okay, Peter, I might just see if I can show where that is on our uh, website. We do have, we've called it an education ready reckoner, but there is a plan to expand that. Um, where you can look for particular particular features because we know um, I'll just find the right spot here okay so hopefully you can see that uh, now we've got this education ready reckoner which is on the resources section on our page on our website so here you can look for say visual enhancement and I don't think we've got the clover oh we've got the clover book light oh we have got them on there so that will say whether it's got near viewing, distance viewing, text to speech. So there's a whole table there of things if you're looking for it. So, so hopefully that will uh, help people out a bit. So yeah, we've called it education because it's mostly things that are relevant for education that we've got in there at the moment. But uh, that can always change. So um, and oh, does the the Cloverbook Pro have Bluetooth headphone capability? That's a good question. I, Do I, don't, think that, I don't think it does. Um, okay, no. does it have a headphone jack? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm Peter, does it, does it have a headphone jack, like an ordinary jack? I'm sure it does, actually, on this side here, yes. Um, Just on the, and the next to the volume controls is the headphone jack here, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, yeah. I should mention also that we also have um, an auto auto focus lock button, especially useful for handwriting where you don't want the camera to uh, be automatically focusing on your knuckles. Um, and then a just a, an image freeze and save button here on the corner as well. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't look like that one has the. Um, Bluetooth. I've just done a quick search in the manual. And it looks like not. Uh, yeah, so it would have to be ordinary head, an ordinary headset. Mm. Yes, yeah, so ordinary headphones. That's fine. Yes. Mm. So, okay. Um, yeah, that's. Has anybody else got any questions? That's all the ones that have popped up so far. Oh. Um, oh yeah. That thing. So yeah. <laughs> just said he was. Just push, pushing boundaries for putting, uh, <laughs> getting Android apps onto the device. But you never know, it's worth the ask. So if they were doing things in, in future. So, um, yeah, any other questions? Mm. Right, well, uh, thanks very much for uh, attending today. It's, uh, it's always great to launch new products and so on. Um, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, thanks very much, Rebecca. Thank you very much, Leanne. And we look forward very much to the next webinar. Yeah, I'll just share our contact details um, for anybody that doesn't have them. Uh, so if anybody is interested in a demonstration or more information, then please uh, give us a call on 1300 883 853 or there's the email info at quantumrlv.com.au. And um, uh, yeah, the devices are on our website. So um, quantumrlv.com.au. So um, yeah, thank you for attending everybody and we'll see you at the next one. We've got one planned for the end of July. So if you signed up to our notifications, then 
you should get that reasonably soon. So that'll all be all about Braille. So, okay, talk to you soon. Thanks. And I'll get the recording around. <laughs>